you know, we have, we have a, a saying, come out, come out fighting and don't retreat. Well, they have the same, you know, same philosophy. Uh, I've been in a military, you know, at Navy, and I know what their attitude is. Familiar territory for headman Greg McMackin. His team of warriors is ready to battle the Army Black Knights this Saturday. UH coming off a loss, hungry for that coveted first W of the 2010 season. Happy Friday. Jamai Webster here sitting in for the big guy, Robert K. Cowlett. Greg McMackin's in-game experience with the armed forces should help this weekend against Army, but there's a lot more to it for Mac than just getting win number one. This early in the season, he's doing what most coaches say they don't. That's look ahead. They'll give us everything they have, and, and uh, you know, they're a good football team. They're one game like us, one game away from a bowl game last year. So that's really what we're both fighting for is, is uh, going to a bowl game. Now, you'd hardly think this one has bowl game implications, but it does. In order to go bowling, you need to first win, and that's what the Warriors expect to do. Bright and early tomorrow morning, UH and Army in West Point. Get some rest because kickoff is at 6 a.m. Hawaii time. The Warriors held their first walkthrough at Mikey Stadium Friday afternoon. Coach Mack said he wanted his players to experience just some of the ambiance that the 86-year-old stadium holds inside its walls. There's no such thing as a good loss unless you learn from it. The lesson the Warriors feel they experienced last week was to not let one get away like they did in a 49-36 loss to USC. This week, the Warriors have a healthy Brian Muniz on their center. The junior says the offense has a chip on its shoulder. They hope to knock off against Army this Saturday. Um, I was really kind of disappointed in our game against them. All those field goals should have been touchdowns, and there was a few misreads. But we learned from that, and I got high expectations for ourselves this week. We need our goal last week was two. Dead. So this week it's 45. Living up to goals is something the Warriors defense failed to do a week ago. And their top priority will be containing an offense that racked up 309 yards last weekend at nearly six yards a pop. Across the board, UH's defensive line outweighs Army's by nearly 12 pounds. But Hawaii says the athleticism of Army to pull their blockers off the line makes them a challenge. They're relentless. They come play after play. They come hard. They play with low pads. They're not that big, but they got. They look like they play with a lot of heart. So it's, it's always tough when you're playing a small, scrappy team like that. And I, I, I respect them for what they do as a team, as an O-line, especially being that they're really undersized. They're always undersized, and they, they always get things done game game to game. No, they, they have a storied program, and, and they're a great school. And great institution and you and you respect the military academies for what they do and, and they go on to protect our country uh, but the thing is we're on our own business trip while some warriors will use the pursuit of win number one as motivation Jake Hune has a more personal grudge at stake his father is an army graduate uh, you know there's a little bit of a little bit of a rivalry going on in the, the Hune household right now most of my family's gonna be here from the East Coast and back in Alaska they're all coming down so <laughs> I grew up all through growing up hearing about army this go beat Navy I'm, I'm looking forward to, to smashing on him a little bit speaking of reunions this will be the first time second-year army coach Rich Ellerson will take the sideline opposite his alma mater. Ellerson was on the 1977 Warriors team, and he preaches a hybrid of the triple option offense attack that he learned from former UH coordinator Paul Johnson. It's going to be an extraordinarily, extraordinarily challenging football game for us. We don't match up especially well. Uh, a style of play that's absolutely unique, and we value being unique. We, so we, we were able to throw the ball on the perimeter. We were able to complement those triple op, those triple option offense with a, a set of plays and take advantage of matchups that, that that offense creates. The Warriors won't be the only ones with chips on their shoulders. Army hasn't been 2-0 or gone to a bowl game since 1996. Their group of seniors feel the pressure to turn the program around. That's definitely a, uh, you know, a big, a big part of you know why we're here. You know, to change things around. Um, that's definitely bonded our team. You know, we all have a common goal. That's that's the win. Bottom line, 
it, it definitely puts a lot on your shoulders, but also you gotta step up for the challenge. You know, life is full of challenges. You gotta be able to take them, walk away with them, and just, and you know, honestly, just overcome them. The pressure from both sidelines will culminate in a very emotional Saturday afternoon. The ninth anniversary of the 9-11 attacks will be honored in a pregame parade right outside of Mikey Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 a.m. Hawaii time. Reporting on the road with the Warriors at West Point, I'm Mike Cherry. Now back to you in the studio. How's it going, everybody? In less than eight hours, Warrior football team will hit the field 5,000 miles away from home in search of victory number one of the 2010 season. UH lost their season opener to now 16th ranked USC by 13 points. will face off with the Black Knights of Army tomorrow morning. Cadets, who beat Eastern Michigan 31-27 last week, racked up 309 yards rushing on the night. Warrior defense, who struggled to stop the Trojan rushing game eight days ago, now with the tough task of slowing down Army's potent triple option attack. They're going to they're gonna fight you and they aren't going to quit and that's, that's what uh, we try to teach our team to do. And they're going to be very disciplined, you know, which is what we have to do. It's all about discipline, Coach Randa and uh, the defensive coaches are um, are beating that into us. So, I mean, we gotta we gotta do our own jobs. We cannot we cannot be looking at anything else. We just gotta look at our man, play our man. Not not everyone knew our assignment was going in USC, and we got exposed on big plays. Uh, we can't have that against the option. Cause I mean, they they're aggressive. When it comes down to it, you gotta just be able to play football. I mean, a lot of time we go out there kind of being robots, trying to just do, trying to just do like what what's on the playbook. But I mean, when it comes down to it, you gotta make plays. You gotta be a football player. So I mean, that's what we gotta do this game. We gotta do our assignments first, and then. When the time comes, you got to make the play, got to play football. Warriors, to the surprise of many, enter the game as two and a half point underdogs. Kickoff set for six in the morning, Hawaii 